welcome to another ride along with goggles and uh oh boy here we go <laughs> it's um free for all tuesday i guess so i got to, this is the legendary skin that i did for rudis tanker boy last year early i think or maybe even the year before i'm not sure quite a while ago anyway and it's a little different than the one that i've redone where i have uh the quality um specialized lubricants thing on the on the side of the trailer and a bigger shield uh but what i did do is well i've got it here for the freight shaker rudas class xl look at the gloss on this truck man that's a properly baked truck i, I didn't it's a work in progress so obviously I, I got the 429 too close to the front and it's covered by the grill so i have to fix that um, I've only done it for this one cab, so I've got a I've got a whole bunch of cabs to go. But I put the mud flaps for the trailer in with the truck skin, and the truck has mud flaps. You can see through the pipes there, so um, they're both in with the uh, skin. So if you're using another Ruta uh, trailer tanker or whatever with mud flaps, you may have to. Put this skin below the other skin if somebody else has made one for you like that or if you're using the open def uh, for anything make sure this skin is ahead of the open def if you're using mud flaps for this truck or trailer yeah so anyway just depends where you position it in your mod order but if it's at the top of the other skins and the open def is below it it's going to work so without further ado let's get on oh yeah Tulsa we're at Synthetico in Tulsa, and we're heading straight on down to Waco. 347 miles to USBB. And that's always interesting. I bet you're going to make us park back here. And to that end, I don't think I got the longest chassis on here. It's still a long truck, but it's not the big one. So should be all right. We'll be able to monkey around down there. And the, the weight is 34,200. We got CMOD's 3406E rolling here. There's a lime green peep. not get we don't have a working odometer in this truck I guess I did uh, change the uh, I made that uh, front wheel cam uh, uh, on this profile uh, work with my mouse buttons as well So we can go back and forth just from the mouse to all these different views. So I got four four views on my mouse, which is kind of cool. I don't know which way we're going. Oh shoot, the voice nav. I wanted to enable the voice nav. Let's do that. Forgot all about it. I put it in the profile. I haven't used the uh, Nagy once um, a gamer and I made lately. So, uh, the UK, Jennifer UK, English Sarah Goggles and Gamer. English Sarah, let's check that one out. Oh, it's got the team. So I've heard good things about this you. One. But I was Ow. told that you roll stop signs, speed Boy. occasionally, and get lost frequently. Let's see if we Oops. can do something about these bad habits. Turn her down a bit. Maybe we can make a proper driver out of you yet. All right. What are the chances? Right 
right now. That mirror's a bit of a bummer on this truck. Keep to the right, and then turn right. Turn right now. That's an interesting little ramp here. Kind of a sharp turn with some concrete on each side of it, and right up a hill. Overpass, I guess. Oh. Oh, maybe. I guess I uh, shifted a full gear when I could have done a split there. underway here. Whatever that bridge is going that way. Well they'll finish it someday. Wait, look at that tire going around. Oh wait. Is there an accident up there? It looks like there's an accident here. Boy, the AI is still having problems. I saw a shadow up there and he's slowing down. So I turned only one thing on the graphic settings down from full. Uh, everything was uh, totally maxed for the last video. In this one I turned the mirror distance down to high from ultra. You can still see pretty far in the mirrors. Lots far enough for what we're doing, but I wanted to make sure we didn't have too much trouble with the frame rates. Got the uh, 79 mile an hour speed limiter going here. got the uh, my darker the painted wood dashes uh, in this one I kind of like the darker look in here oh there's a tall paint nice
brand new truck. I don't think the odometer works in this one. It doesn't look like it. Keep to the right. Oh. And then exit to the right. Should have been paying attention. Exit right. was a merge message there if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not. The 336 is in here. Can you really hear it? They were doing 15 and a quarter, 1525 RPM. Sounds a little frantic for where I usually like it. I usually like them running slow, but. Especially when we only have 34,000 pounds on. Don't need 336s. 325s would be fine. Let's see what our fuel mileage. Uh, Ends up being a brand new truck, so. Keep to the left. Keep to the left. scale here. Darn. Oh, I need that muck to get out off my screen. There it goes. Oh, man. I don't know what these tankers weigh. Scout. Turn around as soon as you can. You just won't leave me alone this one. Um, I'm gonna say 70,000 pounds just for giggles. Fellow tanker driver up there. Well, it's a little scale, I would say. Man. Hope they got an air conditioner in there. Oh, they got something on the wall there, yeah. Wow, it'd be hot in there. Whew. Oh, that's why you stand outside. You gonna check your watch? Ooh, 69, 998. Wow, I missed him by two pounds. <laughs> That is funny. I was just throwing out a, a wag there too. Probably doesn't mean I know what anything weighs. The truck or the trailer, I don't have a clue. <laughs> it's, it's a guess. Oh man, not based on scientific fact, that's for sure. Well, it's 34,200, <clears throat> so for the truck, I said 22, made it uh, 5,600, and 14 for the trailer, 14,000 for the trailer, that's what I, I reckoned it at. 
missed by two pounds. God darn it. I never take I've never taken one of these uh, classics across the scale. Let's see what they weigh. I know, like I've mentioned before, I've carried these on my flat deck, uh, these cabs, numerous times. This very cab, and uh, they're light. That's the truck underneath it, and everything that they stuff in the cab. <laughs> A lot's going on. Yeah, if I don't uh, manage to get in a convoy with the guys tonight, I'm going to uh, do a big old trip in this truck because it's been a while. Boy, that's glaring. That uh, that concrete's quite a glare. Dallas. Yeah, here for a look. A lot of concrete right there. Holy. Good old Romans, what would we do without them? <laughs> Credited with inventing concrete, I believe. A lot of their stuff is still standing, so... Can of Fort Worth, we'd probably want that one. Keep to the right. Yep. Keep to the right, and then turn right. Denton. I'd like to find that spot again. Jeez, I, I was pretty turn sure. Right now. I was at the Peterbilt Museum just flying around when I was uh, testing my AI skin pack. Oh, I'd like to find it again. Oh, what did she say? Darn. Oh, boy. Stay to the left here. That's an awful glare. I don't know much of it's the glass. Yeah, some of it it's the glass and the truck, I'm sure. Hmm. Mr. Ruda. Let's have an update on that. Oh, we got company there on the right. Eighty-four miles to Waco. I should just look for the signs. We'll probably be all right. Oh, look at that! What we got there? What the heck is that? Wow! Some medieval giraffe. Oh man, I didn't catch that. Left or right? Left. Waco, there we go. More concrete. It's funny, you know, they always give Italians, uh, you know, you, you always hear that, that stereotypical thing, we need some concrete work done, get some Italians, and, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't like to generalize things like that. And, you know, everybody does, and you know, certain nationalities are associated with certain things. Like my namesake for drinking, <laughs> the Irish. But uh, yeah, um, 
it's it's funny when my a buddy of mine here in Calgary built a big honking shop in behind his house, like as big a garage as he could fit on the property that was legal. And um, when it came time to do the concrete, the company that came, like we all, the guys in the car club, we all went over and helped out what we could, but we were more or less just getting in the way because this team of Italian guys, and I mean Italian, like they didn't speak English, and I'm sure they did, like they've probably been here forever, but they're just very old, set in their ways, and old guys, and boy did they ever go, holy, they were on it, it was really cool actually, and they could work, they were really good. I was really impressed. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I like watching that. Keep to the left. See if people can really do their job doing it. It's really good. You can learn just watching them. First thing you learn is work ethic. Second thing is try and pick up on some of the skills and what they're doing. But just... And the other thing is sequence of events and, and no wasted motion. I like seeing that. Like, you know, when I was a machinist, I was all about that. Was know what you're going to do next, have it planned out in your head. As soon as you're, uh, you know, you've got the task because you're currently doing, of course you have to be thinking about it, but as soon as you got it dialed, you're, get your head onto the next thing you're gonna be doing, get ready. And, to the right, and then exit to the right. And don't waste any motion. And it's, you sure get a lot done when you work exit like that. Right. Keep to the right. I used to wa like watching when I worked uh, with my oldest brother at a John Deere dealership. And uh, man, I, you know, he's such a good mechanic. And watching him work was, I well, could sit there and watch him work. I mean, I had a job to do too. <laughs> but, you know, when you are got a second and you're catching what he's doing, uh, it's pretty awesome. They had a changeover thing, they, had to do, they called it the 100 hour changeover and had to change out some, I can't remember if it was shafting or bearings in the main transmission on the articulated, like the 8630 tractors or 8430s, whatever they were at the time, I can't remember, 75. And he was on flat rate at the shop and he was making a bundle off of that because the guy could, oh, flat out get it done. It's pretty cool, 100 hour changeover, and I'm pretty sure he was doing them in around 70 hours or less. And really well, you know, properly. But once again, like, well, he could see something that the, the factory wanted you to do it, you know, in this step, this order, there were overly particular and maybe I don't know who was doing it at the factory but they were taking too much apart I think you know what John, right. John had figured out is uh, more of a uh, assembly disassembly instead of every every part and uh, right now. worked great and the dealership loved them for it too I mean they were I'm sure it helped them out but they were having to pay him quite a bit of money because he was doing them so much faster, but they were getting them done. It was a warranty thing, I think. Crikey, I'm relieved that we have arrived safely at our destination. Why don't you run in and see the shipper receiver while I regain my composure? Oh, and try blowing your horn before you back up. All right, <laughs> make sure to forget.
Yeah, the uh, trailer mud flaps look pretty good. They're sitting a big mud flap too. I did that, but I didn't see where it went, but I was kind of in a hurry because we're trying to get this all done before supper. This video and the skin and I uh, did a whole bunch of work this morning on that, uh, this being Monday, that uh, metal, metal flake skin for the Marmon from Rush Hour 109. I, I redid the red metal flake and I essentially just made my own red metal flake with layers of speckles and layers of this. And, I don't know, I mean, I probably used 12 different layers to get the thing done. So it looked half decent. For some reason, the red is a problem. Oh, I guess we're going to try and go counterclockwise here. Oh, we're going to hit that. Oh, just missed it. Yeah, good thing we didn't get a longer truck. I think the other truck's about as long as the trailer. This is just, you know, what this one is, what they call it. I think it's just a standard chassis. Like, I started out with this truck with the, um, the big sleeper, and then just changed it to this 48. for the ugly award here. Yeah, that's no good. Let's fix that. Our truck parked all over a lot. What if somebody wants that other trailer? That's a weird place to uh, back up to a door. And this is a new profile. Oh, I should have talked about that earlier. Darn it. I've got a new profile with just the root of stuff in it. And I'm trying to figure out, I got my 362 to work now, after the update, but my 389, nope, can't, can't, can't even do anything with it. I can buy a 389, I can purchase it and put it somewhere, but as soon as I touch it to go to the shop, do anything, boom, crash to the desktop. And uh, I've tried all kinds of things, reverting to an old version, I don't know. I'm good at my wit's end. And I have this skin pretty much done for the 389, but it's not going to happen until I can, you know, do the things I need to do with it. It's kind of frustrating. I don't know if anybody else is having that problem. Um, I don't have hardly anything for mods in here. I took the chase cam and pivot cam out to see if they're affecting it for some reason, and nope. No idea why it's doing it. So, anyway, that's uh, a good looking old rig. Just got to fix the numbers on the front and get after it. It's going to take, you know, don't look for it in a hurry because there's so many caps for this thing. And I'm going to have to put that logo and that quality specialized lubricants and on different sleepers in different places. That's about it. Fix the 429. So maybe tomorrow if I get lucky and I can but I do have to uh, I got to be out of the house uh, a fair bit tomorrow so uh, it may be Wednesday before you see it depending on how uh, and by tomorrow I mean Tuesday <laughs> after you're watching this I got stuff I gotta gotta leave the house to do so see how that goes but um, as always really appreciate you following along it, and the skin is in the 10 skin pack for a Rudis Polar Tanker, which has been up on Steam for some time now. So that exists, but if you want the mud flaps, they're going to start coming out with the skins of the trucks. So this is the first truck skin that I put out for it. So, And if you're driving, <clears throat> if you want to, if you have this skin, or even if you don't have this truck, the XL, get the skin. 
<coughs> and put it above your open deck for the trailers if you're using it. And you'll have the mud flaps for the trailer. And you can pull up with the W900 until I get the legendary skin for that, whatever you want. So just a little tip there because you can get the mud flaps just by using the skin for the trailer. Weird, eh? <laughs> Oh, that's the other thing, darn, I forgot to mention along the way, was somebody's asking, and I get, I get asked like fairly frequently about the Ruta step logos and the logos, now you do all this Ruta stuff. And it's not too hard, it's not hard to put these mud flaps of the trailer and the truck in the truck skin. So, um, instead of putting them in the open def, you take the chunks of the open def and you put them in the skin then they travel with the skin which is kind of handy because um, the open death has one slot for mud flaps how goofy is that so take that copy that out of there and put it in the skin I'll, I'll show you how I wanna, I'll try and get that done this week but as always um, really appreciate you guys following along and uh, take care and we'll catch you on the next one bye for now